This is the all new Retroid Pocket Flip 2, and I've been having an absolute blast with this handheld. Out of the box, it runs Android, and you can definitely get whatever you want done in Android. You could use the basic Android interface, or you could use the built-in Retroid launcher, and of course you could install a third-party launcher if you want to. But recently, I installed Linux on this using an operating system known as Rocknix. This actually runs from the micro SD card, and right now over on their website or GitHub, they do have an image available for the Retroid Pocket 5, but it is working here, and as far as I can tell, I mean, everything's working. We've got RGB control, fan control, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and even the built-in controls. I mean, after all, this is basically a Retroid Pocket 5 in a different form factor. It's using the same CPU. We've got the Qualcomm Snapdragon 865. It's actively cooled, and we've got 8 gigs of RAM. But the main reason I wanted to get this up and running on the Flip 2 was because we've got access to other emulators that we just can't use inside of Android, like RPCS3 for PS3 emulation and XEMU for original Xbox emulation. And I'll tell you, Xbox runs amazingly on this device. PS3 emulation is a bit hit or miss here, but you know, if you did want to install this and use it for GameCube, Wii, PS2, you've also got access to that. And basically what we've got is emulation station running in Linux on this device. The image that I'm using is specifically designed for the Retroid Pocket 5, but again, like I mentioned, everything here is working and I'm sure that they will release a Flip 2 version. There might be a few things that I'm kind of missing here, but so far everything that I needed actually works. Fan control, we can change the CPU governor, we can even overclock the GPU here. And hopping over to the official wiki, I mean, there is loads of documentation here. It also works on some of the Anbernic devices out there, but you know, we've got that Snapdragon 865 with the Retroid Pocket 5 and the Flip 2, so I figured we'd go ahead and run it here. It's super easy to install. Basically, you're just gonna flash it to a micro SD card, put it in the Retroid Pocket 5 or the Flip 2. While the device is booting up, you're gonna hold the volume up button to get in kind of the boot menu and you can boot directly from that SD. You'll be right inside of the Rocknix operating system. Emulation station here is fully customizable. You can download new themes directly from within the operating system. We've also got that scraper built in. And yeah, so far this has been working great, but I'd say the most impressive thing here is original Xbox emulation. Heading into the settings, we've got some CPU configuration. We can change that governor, go up to performance. We've even got a little bit of an overclock on the GPU here. We've also got a fan curve adjustment and we can control the LED here. Basically, there's a few different settings, but I've been sticking at the battery setting with the RGB here. It's gonna be green when you're full, I think orange when you're about halfway and red when it's dying. Just kind of gives you a little idea of what kind of battery life you're working with while you're playing a game. But now I wanna jump into some Xbox emulation because like I mentioned, this is really impressive. Uh, most everything that I've tested has booted up, but I have not found a way to display the FPS counter here while launching these games through Emulation Station. You can start the emulator up all by itself through the settings, and from there you can turn the monitor on. But through Emulation Station in the settings here, I just can't find it. Either way, we've got a lot to work with here, and again, we're seeing some great performance out of these games. Right now, you might notice that the screen is a bit stretched out here. We've got Forza Motorsports, but there's a way to change this. We can scale it properly, but then we're going to lose some uh, screen size here. We'll just open up the settings, and uh, from here, we can go to our video settings and scale it properly. As you can see, we've got those borders on the sides, but this is the way I like to play it. There's a few games here that I do not mind playing in a little bit of a stretched area doesn't make too much of a difference to me, but with this one, I do like that scaled aspect ratio. But as you can see, this is really awesome. And I did test this out through kind of opening up the game in standalone mode with the monitor on screen. We're running at about 58 FPS. And while I'm playing it right here and I don't have a frame counter on, it doesn't make a difference to me. I mean, it still feels like it's at full speed. I've been having a lot of fun with Xbox games here but there are a few that will run under 60. I mean, of course, we've only got an ARM CPU, and at that, it's an older Snapdragon 865, but to see these emulators running on a device like this is pretty impressive. And if you watch my channel, you know I love the Forza franchise. Obviously, this is where it all started, Forza Motorsports. I put so many hours into this game on the original Xbox. Coming back over here on a handheld is really awesome. We can exit very easily bring up the XEMU menu, and we can exit. It'll bring us right back into Emulation Station, or if you kind of want to force quit, 
you can press L1, start and select at the same time at any given time, and it'll bring us right back here. We'll start another one up, and this is one that I do not mind playing in kind of stretched mode. Jet Set Radio Future. This is one that runs at a steady 60 FPS, and I'm at 1280 by 720. But to tell you the truth, when I change the resolution from the settings, it doesn't seem to make much of a quality difference. So I'm not sure if it's kind of stuck at a given resolution or not. But uh, either way, it does look good on this 5.5 inch AMOLED display. Of course, we had to test out Halo 2, and it's not too bad. Every once in a while, I do notice a big dip when there's lots of explosions on screen. And XEMU here on this device does have networking features. And I've heard of people being able to get that up and running on their Retroid Pocket 5. And I've also got this installed on my Pocket 5. I tried to do a little bit of Halo 2 multiplayer using the built-in networking settings with XEMU. But unfortunately, I just could not get them to connect. I thought it would be really awesome to be able to, you know, be in the house and do kind of a little bit of a land there with an emulator playing Halo 2. But I personally just couldn't get it set up properly. And like I mentioned, I've heard of people being able to do it. So if you have got it working on your Retroid Pocket 5 or another handheld with Rocknix or even let's say Botocera and XEMU, let me know the steps you took in the comments below. Here's Ninja Gaiden Black, and this performed way better than I thought it would. I've just set this down stationary, and I've got an Xbox controller connected right now to make it a bit easier on myself. You'll have to go into the XEMU settings and make sure that you've got the proper controller as player one, but you can do up to four controllers with this emulator on the Flip 2. In my full Flip 2 review, which will be coming up in the next two or three days, I'm going to spend some more time with it. We will test out some more Xbox emulation using Rocknegs, I'm really hoping that an official Flip 2 version is released, and if not, we'll still use the Retroid Pocket 5 version of Rocknix. But I really didn't want to go ahead and load up a 512 or a 1 terabyte card with a ton of Xbox games and then just have to wipe it the next day, so I only installed a few to test here. But everything so far has worked really good. Next thing I wanted to do was take a look at some PS3 emulation using RPCS3. And just like on PC, it does have to compile those PPU modules. Unfortunately, Afro Samurai would not launch for me. But an easier to run game like Rayman Origins actually does run at 60 FPS. I've got the uh, built-in frame counter up in the top left-hand corner. I know it's a bit hard to see, but this game runs absolutely amazing on this device. I was really impressed, but it's not a super hard game to run. And uh, yeah, if you've ever tried out PS3 on a lower-end CPU, you know you're going to run into games that just don't perform well. And when we compare this to, let's say, an x86 CPU, this is definitely a lower-end chip, so that's something to keep in mind. But there's a lot of indie games and 2D games that are easier to run for PS3 that'll actually run at full speed on the Flip 2. But once you start moving over to more intensive 3D games, that's where you're probably going to run into some issues like Tekken 6 here, which in my opinion isn't a really hard game to emulate on an x86 platform, but as you can see here, we're only at like 20 to 24 FPS, and I did start up RPCS3 standalone and try to mess around with the settings. I really couldn't get much better performance out of it with this Snapdragon 860. So yeah, I mean, even though this will run PS3, it's definitely not going to run every game at full speed. But so far, I've been having a great time with Rocknix installed on the Retroid Pocket Flip 2. This is a really awesome little setup here, and given the fact that it's running from the SD card, we can just swap right back over to Android at any time. This is non-intrusive, it's only running from the SD card, and there's a way to set up a larger SD card with a separate partition, so you've still got some extra storage for the Flip 2 or the Pocket 5 inside of Android. Or you could just totally leave it alone and use the full SD card for Rocknix. That's how I've got it set up right now. But uh, so far, yeah, I've been having a really good time with this system, whether I'm running Android or Rocknix on it. And my full review will be coming up soon, so definitely keep an eye on the channel. But this is turning out to be one of my favorite little handhelds. And I've always been a big fan of these clamshell style. DS, 3DS have always been my favorite. I know we don't have dual screens here, but you know, having a nice little flip out pocketable emulation setup is really awesome. And the Flip 2 kind of checks all the boxes for me. 
but that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you want to learn a little more about Rock Nicks, I'll leave links in the description. And if you're thinking about picking up a Flip 2, I'll also leave a link down below. But like always, thanks for watching.